Ants are one of the most successful and dominant groups of insects on Earth. Today, there are more than 22,000 classified species, probably tens of thousands still unclassified, and hundreds that are classified from the fossil record that are already extinct. While all of them have same familiar body type, six legs, segmented body that consists of head, alitrunk, petiole, and tegaster, they showed ability to adapt to almost any environment on Earth. Ants have colonized almost every landmass, with only exception being Antarctica and a few remote inhospitable islands. The diversity of modern ant species are mind-blowing. Look at these funky-looking fellows. This one has a head adapted to be a door to the colony. There are herbivorous ant species and predatory ones. And that's not all, there are also farmer ants. Some of them take care of colonies of aphids to farm some nectar, others are growing mushrooms in their nests. Ants attack and defend themselves by biting and in many species by stinging or spraying chemicals. The colonies are often described as kind of a superorganism, because the ants appear to operate as a unified entity, collectively working together to support the colony. Ant colony size can range from a few dozen individuals to millions. Interesting about some more fun facts about the ants? For every human on Earth, there are estimated to be about 2.5 million ants, or 20 quadrillion in total, and the insect's total mass exceeds that of all birds and mammals combined. I did mention that there's a lot of ant species that are described from a fossil record. More precisely, from amber deposits of the Baltic region, as known as the Baltic amber, and also from the Dominican Republic, as known as the Dominican amber. Baltic amber is dated to be around 50 million years old. Dominican amber is a bit younger, around 25 million years old. There is 139 described ant species in Baltic amber alone. And what do we see looking at these 50 million years old ants? Obviously, we see they are awesome and cute and bizarre, and they very much resemble modern living ants. There is 20 species of Baltic amber ants that are still alive and thriving today. One of the examples would be Lassius Schaeferdecari. This ant is common in Baltic amber, it was thriving 50 million years ago and is still alive and well today. These 50 million years old Eocene ants are really cool, no doubts about that, but what were ants looking like double that age? Let's say 100 million years old. Well, back then there was lineage of ants nicknamed the Hell Ants. Hell Ants, hmm, I bet they could look something like this, right? I'm just kidding, these ants from this image are work of the imagination. In reality, there's no way something could look as alien and bizarre as this, right? Wrong again. This is the real ant that lived in the Cretaceous period from the subfamily Hydomyrmidinae, as known as the Hell Ants. And in my opinion, it looks way scarier than that fictional ant I showed you before. Nature's imagination is a lot richer than that of any human. And as if it wasn't enough to have this one scary species of Hell Ant, let me introduce you 16 more species of Hell Ants that lived in the same time. These were the T-Rexes of the ant kingdom, scary solitary predators that were specialized in hunting oversized prey, the giant killers. All of them shared the same hellish features, crazy sight-like mandibles that were snapping vertically instead of horizontally, fancy head ornamentation and distinct bulging compound eyes. Smaller species of hell ant measures around 3 mm in body length, tiny while the biggest one was whooping one with a half centimeters, for an ant that considered big, even by modern standards. There is not even a single living ant species that resembles any of the members from the Hydromancinae subfamily. The whole lineage went extinct back in the Cretaceous period, without any living relatives, which is truly sad. Where and when the hell ants were discovered? In southeastern Asia, where currently Myanmar is located, 100 million years ago, there was ancient tropical forest with an extreme diversity of flora and fauna. 
dominant trees were pines and cypress, which produced big amounts of raisin. Hell ants were also part of that ancient ecosystem. Raisin did attract all sorts of animals and insects with its scent. Ultimately, some of these insects got trapped in that raisin, which after millions of years fossilized to form amber. Fast forward to the modern times, humanity was interested in amber as a resource, using it for medicine, jewelry, and it also attracted scientific interest. In the early 19th century, three species of hell ants were discovered in amber. Were hell ants attracted by raisin as well? Or were they attracted by their prey, which was interested in the raisin? We can only guess. Despite its collection in the early 19th century, Fossils of the genus Hydormensnaya were not described until 80 years later in 1996 by Russian paleoentomologist Gennady Bluski. First ant that was described by the Gennady was Hydomyrmex cerberus, which is truly a menacing name fitting this intimidating looking ant. Type description of the new genus and species was inspired by Greek mythology, Hydos meaning Hades, the king of underworld, and Myrmica, which is a name of a ant genus. And in the last 25 years, scientists did discover and described 16 more species of hell ants from this genus, not only from Myanmar's Cretaceous amber deposits, but also from France and Canada's. And every single one of them is menacing visually in a cool way and each got a cool name from the scientists. Now, what are the main differences between modern ants and the hell ants? Back during the Cretaceous, ants and the entire order of Hymenoptera were in bloom, experimenting with various shapes and lifestyles. Ants are eusocial insects, taking cooperation to the next level. They help to raise the young, build and guard the colony as a team. Majority of the modern ants lives in huge colonies and hunts in big groups. Scientists suggest that it wasn't the case with the hell ants. Most likely, they lived in a small colonies up to 100 individuals and hunted as a solitary predators. We do have some evidence to support this theory by looking at the amber specimens. It's not uncommon to find swarms of ants in amber that displays that they operate as a group, but in 99% of hell ants in amber were cases of single hell ant trapped in amber or hell ant with other insects. While it doesn't prove that they were solitary hunters, same as finding single ant of any species in amber wouldn't prove that this specific ant is a solitary hunter, because ants also have scouts to look for resources or prey. However, combining the fact that the high majority of hell ant specimens in amber were solitary individuals with the fact that modern most effective predatory ants are solitary hunters with powerful trap jaws, same as hell ants, makes quite a compelling argument for the hell ants to also be a solitary hunters. Talking about the modern ant trap jaws, which is same mechanism hell ants use to hunt, we can see a very distinct and unique difference. While all of the living ant specimens have horizontally snapping jaws, Hell ants jaws were snapping vertically, additionally they had horn above the jaws, which were most likely used to trap prey between the horn and the jaws. Additionally, some species like Ceratomarmix ellenbergi had bristles on the horn, which most likely were used as a sensor for the jaws to snap. These differences in the morphology of the mod parts, head ornamentation and cranial features of this remarkable taxa leads as evidence of specialized prey capture. There is one suborder of insects that lives in small colonies and are solitary hunters, similarly as hell ants. That order is called Apocrite, an order of wasps. And that's not a coincidence, because ants did evolve from the wasps. While not necessarily, that could be a part of explanation of why hell ants also live in small colonies and are solitary hunters, because Cretaceous is the exact time period when the ants evolved from the wasps. Hydomermincinaia ants are one of the earliest lineages in the ants evolutionary tree. While hell ants specifically looks quite distinct from the wasps, they also look distinct from all other ants, 
and looking at modern ants, sometimes there is really hard to tell a difference between ants and some species of wasps. This can come as a shock, but looking with naked eye, are ants just a wingless wasps? It's not quite funny, because we do have winged ants, so maybe the identification difference is the wasp stinger. Also nope, lots of ant species has the stingers as well, and not even all wasps has the stingers themselves. More than that, not all wasps have wings, the wingless wasps, Cretaceous period had wingless wasps as well, with powerful legs which likely were jumping wasps. Let's look at this identification difference image and learn how to identify ants from the wasps. There is only two differences. Ants have elbowed antennas. Wasp doesn't have elbowed antennas. But even so, it's not so easy, because some wasps have a long first segment of the antennas, which can look a lot like elbowed antennas. Second and last difference is the petiole, the bumps that connect gaster and the thorax. All the ants have either one or two segments of the petioles, with exception of thin waisted wasps that can have one petiole, rest of the wasps does not have the petiole. Even knowing these two small differences, sometimes it's challenging to identify if it's a ant or a wasp. And there is one more idea I was thinking about. Since hell ants evolved from the wasps, was the vertically snapping jaws product of evolution distinct to hell ants, or maybe it came from the wasps, and while looking for vertically jawed wasps, I found out that vertically snapping jaws is very unique adaptation in the entire insect world. It didn't came from the wasp, and there is only one other species of beetle larva that does have same jaws snapping mechanism as hell ants, and that was case of convergent evolution. There is one more fascinating fact about the environment these ants lived in. The KT extinction event that killed all the non-avian dinosaurs haven't happened yet. Meaning that the ancient tropical rainforest where hell ants were living was filled not only with vertebrates and invertebrate species, but with dinosaurs as well. In animal kingdom, in each environment we have base niche partitioning. On the basic level there is herbivores and carnivores, like plant-eating dinosaurs and meat-eating dinosaurs, right? In reality, it's a lot more diverse and complex. Herbivorous dinosaurs compete with each other for food, and so they adapt to different niches of food. For example, mega herbivores that were feeding on the leaves of the tallest trees, and smaller herbivores that fed on the grass, and along with diversity of prey, Meat-eating dinos evolved to hunt basically in every niche of herbivores, from the biggest to smallest. T-Rex would hunt it and scavenge the biggest prey. Microraptors and other small predatory dinos were hunting small critters or even insects, and this principle is also true in the insect kingdom. Insects also specialize to hunt for different prey, like Coscomastigus monstrabilis, that evolved net-like antennas to hunt springtails which niche the hell ants were occupying. It's hard to tell for sure, but paleoentomologists think with their specialized mandibles and horns, they were the T-Rexes of the insect kingdom, that were capable of stabbing and catching prey ten times as big as they were themselves. They evolved this way because competition for, for prey in that environment was extra high. Hell ants shared their habitat with other fearless hunters. I already mentioned alien-looking predatory ant-like stone beetle that preyed on the springtails, the Coscomastigus. Alongside it lived now extinct killer cockroach, called Manipulator. It was night hunter that most often was waiting in an ambush and was capable to sprint for short distances. There were tons and tons of all kinds of predatory rough beetles and scarabs, as well as fearless praying mantises, Scolopendra centipedes predatory crickets, and many many more hell ants competitors. And today, in Burmese Ember, we are discovering all these monster-like insects, perfectly preserved. More than that, Burmese Ember can contain not only arthropods, including insects and arachnids, but also primitive birds, lizards, snakes, frogs, and fragmentary dinosaur remains. 
We also believe that Burmese ember tropical rainforest was situated near the sea coast, where raisin was subsequently transported into shallow marine environment. For that theory, we have a few proofs ammonite fossils embedded in amber, as well as marine gastropods. Additionally, pedog bivalves were burrowing into the amber specimens. As of today, we have 17 described species of hell ants, and the fall lineage was a predatory one, with distinct jaws to catch oversized prey. And yet, most of them had a bit different jaws, with the exception of some species that only difference was mostly the size of an ant. Why is that? We already acknowledged that hell ants were specialized predators, so to have so many of them with different head ornamentation and jaw shapes could mean that the hell ants were not only competing with other insect families for the prey, but with other hell ant colonies as well. And so, evolution being evolution, hell ants diversified in hunting strategies. We have few amber specimens showcasing hell ants in hunting operations. There is one that trapped ancient cockroach-like species, which more precisely looks to be a Alienoptera nymph, and other was holding an oversized beetle larva of sorts. I would think that each species of hell ants had its preferable prey, and different jaws was modified to catch that specific prey more efficiently. Perfect example would be Darwin's finches, that all were from the same species but had different beaks adapted to different food. Hell ants thrived and terrorized Cretaceous forest for 20 million years, snapping and squashing everything they could get between their jaws. But history shows that overspecialization doesn't work well for a long term. Overspecialized predators are the most vulnerable for changes in the environment, and in case of extinction events, they are first to fall. While these fancy horns and jaws were perfect for catching specific prey, they could be a real disadvantage to change prey preference if there was any sorts of disturbance in the availability of prey items. We know that the same thing happened for example with famous Megalodon, that was specializing in catching big prey like marine mammals, for example middle-sized cetaceans, and went extinct when the food sources became more limited in the oceans. And we see same thing happening with the currently living biggest scavenger bird, the California's condor. That bird was adapted to scavenge Pleistocene's megafauna, which went extinct, and California's condor now faces extinction as well, because of the lack of food its body requires. Sadly, hell ants are extinct, and there is zero living relatives that survived to the modern days. Hell ants are considered holy grails for the collectors, even though they are extinct since million years, thanks to for amber preservative qualities, we can still admire these little scary predators in all their glory. I believe there is many more undescribed hell ant species waiting for their turn to be discovered. And that's it for the video. I hope you did enjoy it, if you did smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I have much more amber related content already, I will produce more in the future, and let me know in the comments if there is some specific ancient creature discovered in Ember you would like to learn about next. Thanks for watching and see you next time, bye!